It has been a very eventful start to the Trump presidency, especially when you consider there are still about 1,400 days to go in his four-year term. I spoke about his evolving foreign policy with a panel of guests. Joining us from Paris is Victor Gowan here in the studio of Serb Gupta. We're going to be talking about uh, Trump's foreign policy. Uh, Victor, why don't I start with you? And I've just kind of picked a couple of headlines as kind of a launching off uh, point. Trump's resolutions, then reversals. His presidency marked by abrupt policy shifts. Trump's foreign policy, is it coherent or is it ever shifting? How do you see it? I think uh, for the first 100 days of office by President Donald Trump, uh, his uh, record, as far as his foreign policies are concerned, is a record of unpredictability and great uncertainty. And uh, he is also full of surprises, sometimes uh, deliberately uh, presented to the world. And this is actually very discomforting to the rest of the world and also eventually may generate more crises going down the road as far as many major international situations are concerned. Hopefully, going forward, President Donald Trump can become more steady as a leader, uh, generating less surprises to the rest of the world, and also project an image of stability. i got to ask you the same question. Coherent or ever-shifting? How do you view it? He certainly doesn't have anything which we can call a doctrine, a Trump foreign policy doctrine. I would say it can cut both ways. Let me say the good thing about his policy is that he is gradually shifting to a traditionalist form of Republican foreign policy. And we know what that is and that there is a certain degree of predictability to that. But obviously, he's been all over the place on foreign policy. And he doesn't even have much of a team ready. And so many, most countries don't even know whom to go to to get clarifications on foreign policy, especially when the key principles themselves are talking at all with each other. So it's, it's not a good thing. And that's, that's what's created this incoherence. And, and you were talking about who to go to, Victor. Uh, you know, and you talked about how this can be discomforting. But one of the other things I read in a recent article is that he gets so much of his information from cable news that now some foreign governments are taking their diplomats and making sure that they appear on certain news programs. And in many respects, that's even better than actually getting a, a meeting with them in the Oval Office. Uh, this also is, is rather uh, discomforting, I would think, uh, for foreign leaders. Definitely. I think uh, President Donald Trump's uh, habit of tweeting his foreign policy outlined to the rest of the world is, first of all, very unconventional. Secondly, it is actually very uncertain and very much surprising. And I think, on the one hand, the rest of the world uh, need to uh, readjust to this very untraditional way of doing international relations. But on the other hand, I think uh, the United States government and President Donald Trump himself also need to learn that whatever he does or says actually carries a lot of weight, mainly because the presidency of the United States is one of the most important offices, not only in the United States, but in the world. Is he making tensions worse, or is he actually focusing on problems with the DPRK where other previous administrations really haven't addressed it? It was always anticipated that the huge amount of pressure would be put on DPRK in March and April with the exercises and with Kim Jong-un usually doing his ballistic fanfare during that, the, during that month. But the important point is he has left open the door for negotiation and spoken about it. Again, not been very coherent about it, but unlike President Obama, who was a little standoffish here, he has broad pressure, but he has also left an opening for diplomacy. And that's a good thing. I want to get your final thoughts on the relationship with China, because obviously the most vital bilateral relationship there is. It started off kind of rocky, one would imagine. Uh, there was the Mar-a-Lago summit, but even that, uh, the, the missiles launched uh, during dessert. Talk to me, Victor, your sense where this relationship is now. Well, first of all, indeed, China-U.S. relations are the most important bilateral relations in the world today, as well as probably for many years uh, to come. Now, President Donald Trump, before he went into the Oval Office, had a track record of bashing on China, being very hostile and very nasty about China. And in China, we listened to what he had to say as a presidential candidate, as president-elect, uh, for many months. And we were actually preparing for the worst. Now, 100 days into his presidency, China-U.S. relations seem to be back on the normal track. And I think 
without Chinese and American close cooperation now, many major international hot issues will be difficult, if not impossible, to be resolved constructively. So this bodes well for not only China and the United States, but also for world peace and uh, development going forward. U.S.-China relations. I, I, I totally agree. Uh, U.S.-China relations has actually been the real bright spot of the 100 days in office. I mean, considering what candidate Trump said about China and where the U.S.-China relationship is now, it's profoundly different. And to, for that, I think both, presid both presidents get a lot of credit. I think it was pre President Xi Jinping who took the initiative to see that the relationship remains tight, but President Trump has reciprocated that. There will be trade tensions coming down the line. I think they've set the ball rolling on that front, the U.S. government. So we'll have to watch this relationship. But it's very important that they've managed to strike up the right tone. And, and even if he does go wrong on, on many other fronts in foreign policy, if he can keep U.S.-China relations on an even keel, I think that will be a great contribution. Sarah Gupta here in the studio. Victor Gao joining us from Paris. Thank you both very much for your insights. Thank you.